Hey guys, I wanted to talk about things that I did differently this time around that really helped for our second baby that I did not know for our first baby. So these three things have been life-changing. The first thing is, well, let me just tell you, the first time that I had a baby, I was not only trying to take care of me, the baby, but I was also trying to take care of my husband. Um, and I realize now that there's just things that you can't take care of for people. Um, maybe he's nursing right now. So, so there's just things that they have to walk through and things that you really can't change for them. And the more you try to change, the more they resist. So, uh, that was one of the things I was trying to make sure that he was in a healthy mental state and he went through some depression. I did too. And it was just really hard for us. So I was trying to kind of get him out of it when I was in a really low funk too so this time i just kind of let him be and i just observed a lot more uh that really helped because he needed space to process and a lot of people they do need space to process they don't need advice um when they're feeling down a lot of times they just need a healthy loving space to process their emotions and i let him have it this time um, let him have it. <laughs> no, I let him have the space this time. And I gave myself more space too. I was more kind and compassionate with myself. And the first time I was just really hard on myself. I needed to get everything perfect. Uh, you know, no germs around the baby, no craziness. Like just the baby had to sleep in absolute silence. <laughs> it's just like I had to tiptoe and walk around on eggshells around a sleeping baby. And this time around, we have a toddler that's just screaming, <laughs> screaming her head off, playing. She has a little, uh, like, little, little tykes car that she loves, and she's driving around the kitchen island screaming in the little car. Um, and the baby's sleeping, and, and he's totally fine. And I was telling my husband, like, this is... This is great. He's going to get an award for best sleeper. <laughs> and he's like, he's doing great. And it, it also is just like, you know, it, it, it's good because then we don't have to be super quiet around him when he's sleeping. And the second thing is that I was comparing myself to other moms. I would see moms on social media and then I would want to do all those things or be all those things. But it wasn't even one person I was comparing myself to. I was comparing myself to like hundreds, if not thousands of posts that I would see all the time. So um, like every day I would look at Instagram and I would see, wow, these moms are really excelling. And I am in the postpartum period. I feel like I'm still recovering. My stitches are swollen. I'm in a lot of pain. Um, I just went through a lot. My body went through a lot. And then I would kind of compare myself or just even to myself, I was just really mean to myself. I was like, you know, if I did something wrong, um, I would just be really tough on myself instead of saying, okay, well, I'm learning the ropes right now and I don't have to get everything perfect. I just have to get everything me. And I think that's, that's something that can be applied in any stage of life, that we don't have to be perfect and definitely uh, don't have to compare ourselves to the perfect images we see on social media. And it's just funny too, just talking about it. Like I was really comparing myself to hundreds of women and that in my mind was like one woman and that was the ideal mom or something like that. And then I would try to, you know, I would start beating myself up like, how come I don't have the time to do this or look like that or do this and that. But, but all of those things, the competition, it's, man-made that's not how women were made women were made to support each other and i really realized that um especially with my midwives and doula doulas um the way that they supported me women support women in the most absolutely beautiful ways and it's just sad that it's come to you know looking at magazines and then comparing ourselves instead of showing compassion um and really understanding what that comes from is, is like the marketing. Okay, well, these people, 
companies don't really make a lot of money off of women supporting women, but if you can make a woman feel down about herself, then you can basically sell her anything because then she's susceptible to, you know, feeling like she needs everything, every single product out there. And, uh, and that's another thing too, that I didn't need every product out there for my baby, <laughs> but I really felt like I needed every product out there. And on top of that, that created a lot of clutter in my house. And my husband is really clean and it's hard for me to maintain stuff because I'm, um, a little bit all over the place. I'm creative and he's creative too, but he's more rigid creative. I'm like crazy creative with my living environment. <laughs> so that created a lot of friction as well. And just the third thing was, um, just really don't try to do too much at all because your body just went through a lot. And when people come over and they invite themselves over, they want to see the baby, you can say no. You can say, I'm, I'm recovering. The first time I think I just let whoever come over. There weren't a lot of people, but I, I think I would have asked them like, oh, can you bring something? Or they would ask, oh, what kind of food do you want to eat? Um, and I'd be like, oh no, we're okay. <laughs> like we just went through a lot. And if you are going to come over, that's a blessing, you know, that's a blessing for both sides. And if you're asking what kind of things we need, that's a blessing too. So definitely accept all the help you can get. I think that's, um, something that I started learning later. Just when people offer to help, definitely take them up on it. Um, in Asian culture, you really want to be like modest and be like, oh, no, 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 we don't need anything. Yeah, we don't need anything. We're good. And you don't want to go out of your way to help us. But, you know, that's a blessing for people to help their loved ones. So I just, I learned that too um, this time around. And I'm like, okay, I'm going to let people help me. Um, and also with my husband. I, I barely let him do anything with the baby the first time because I needed everything perfect. Now, it wasn't fair to him, and also it just created so much burden for me that I was resent, resenting him. So when your husband is help, helping, and some people don't like that word, like my husband's helping, that's his responsibility. He just shouldn't be helping, he should just be doing it. But just like if he's showing, you know, men aren't as confident because women have more maternal instincts and you know <laughs> maternal instincts of course because they're women but <laughs> and moms but um I meant like they just know instinctively what to do with babies and men they take a little while and if women like if moms start discouraging them and saying okay like uh don't do that don't change the diaper that way don't don't do this and that I, I read something the baby will tell you when they don't like something so we don't have to be helicopter wifing and momming our our partners so they're already probably judging themselves and it's just going to add more burden to them and it's going to weigh them down plus they're not going to want to do that again and they'll be like okay then you do it then because i'm not doing it right some people are like that some people sometimes i do that too i'm like okay well then you do it then because you're, you're hovering over my shoulder. But I just, I hope these helped you. My arm is super sore right now. I need to get my stand. But um, I really hope these helped you. And I just changed arms. <laughs> but, but yeah, uh, God bless you. And you got this. Just really let go. Surrender to being a new mom. The process of, of learning the ropes and learning how to how to mother, you already know how to do it. Just really trust yourself. Do not look at all the experts. And it's good to read up on that sometimes, but take it all with a grain of salt because they don't know your baby. And that's the thing. We we didn't sleep train. We didn't, we didn't do a lot of things that people normally want to do because, you know, I'm breastfeeding my toddler. That's kind of taboo and weird. But, but that's me and you don't have, like I said, you don't have to get it perfect, just get it you. You don't have to get it to anyone else's standards except for 
the standards that you have for yourself and also you know be kind with those standards too if it's working for your family that's the most that's the best litmus test that's the best bar that you could ever reach don't don't compare it to anyone else um, and most of all support yourself and support your fellow mothers and um, you know if there's any competition in a mom's group get out because you don't need that you don't need to be part of that kind of lifestyle moms have a lot of stuff to deal with already so all right well god bless you and have a beautiful postpartum period um and yeah you are amazing you gave birth or you're about to give birth and to trust your body do what's right for you yes babe <laughs>